Greetings world hoppers and welcome to the Grand Apparatus. In this video, we'll be breaking down Sixth of the Dusk, a novella set in the Cosmere written by Brandon Sanderson in 2014 and included in the Arcane Unbounded collection. Sanderson recently announced that his fifth secret project set to release in 2025, The Isles of Emberdark, and that this will be both an expansion and continuation of The Sixth of the Dusk. In fact, the entire story of The Sixth of the Dusk will also be included within The Isles of Emberdark as a series of flashbacks intertwined within the story. Brandon Sanderson has also already released several chapters of The Isles of the Ember Dark, which we will thoroughly cover in an upcoming video. But today I think it's best to re-familiarize ourselves with the full story of the original Sixth of the Dusk. The story takes place in the Dromenad system. The Dromenad system contains seven planets named for their relative position to the sun, with the four planets closest to the sun being in a habitable zone and all of which have water as their dominant feature. Three of these planets are inhabited by fully developed human societies, which makes the Dromenad system unique within the Cosmere. Six of the Dusk all takes place on the planet named First of the Sun, which also contains several features that are unique to the Cosmere, perhaps the largest being that it is home to a perpendicularity. If someone travels through the cognitive realm, a perpendicularity allows them to transition to the physical world, thus allowing intergalactic relocation without having to physically travel through space. Now, typically perpendicularities are created by the presence of a shard on the planet itself, in fact, a perpendicularity is a hallmark of a shard's presence. The first of the sun, however, is not home to a shard, despite the fact that it has a perpendicularity on the planet, a mystery that we will hopefully better understand after Isles of the Ember Dark releases as it is not further explained in Sixth of the Dusk. The title Sixth of the Dusk is also the full name of our protagonist, whom goes by Dusk for short his full name being in the traditional style of his culture on the Elekin Islands, where children are often named based on their order of birth and the day on which they were born. So for our protagonist, his name would have come from being the sixth born child of his family and being born at dusk. Though, as we will find out and will cover further on, that's actually not the true reason for his naming. Now, Dusk is a trapper, which is an ancient and solitary profession that is taken up from a small number of those born in the Elekin Islands. Trappers are taken at a young age to be trained on Sori, the smallest and least dangerous of the Pantheon Islands. During training, trappers must learn to be completely self-sufficient, finding their own food, water, and shelter, as well as being able to quickly spot and navigate through numerous hazards, including extremely poisonous plants and deadly animals. And most important of all, trappers learn to track, trap, and breed birds called aviers, which have powerful auras which can give humans around them unique abilities. The money that comes from eventually selling these aviers is really what makes it worth it for trappers to continue to explore and work on these dangerous islands. So when we first see Six of the Dusk, he is rowing towards the island he chose when he first became a trapper, though now he's been a trapper for quite some time. This island called Patchy is by far the largest of the islands, and the most dangerous. Filled with poisonous plants, death ants that can kill you with a single bite, and numerous large and deadly beasts, many of which hunt their prey not through typical senses like sound, smell, or sight, though some can as well, but primarily through sensing their prey's cognitive ability. Luckily, Dusk has bonds with two aviers of his own that give him unique abilities that are critical towards his survival on Pat G. The first avier named Cokerly can disguise the cognitive ability of those within its aura. And among aviers, this is a fairly common ability and certainly one of the most useful given how deadly the predators on these islands are. Dusk's second avier named Sack is a lot more unique. Sack gives Dusk the ability to see images of his own corpse when something could potentially kill him, which basically gives clues to Dusk about what he needs to avoid to prevent his demise. And this ability is extremely rare, in fact it may be unique to only Sack at this point, given what is revealed further on in the story. And so this combination with Cokerly disguising his cognitive ability from predators and Sack illuminating potential dangers around him, Dusk has just enough of an advantage to be able to survive what is pretty much an inhospitable patchy. Dusk's ability to be bonded with two aviers also seems to be unique as most humans can only form a bond with one. Why Dusk is able to be bonded with both aviers is still somewhat unknown. 
So as dusk arrives on Patchy, he quickly discovers evidence that a group called the Northern Interest Trading Company have also arrived on the island. The Northern Interest Trading Company being a mercantile business that has an interest in settling and exploiting the Pantheon Islands, and as we eventually find out, are trying to discover the mystery behind how the aviaries get their powers so they can essentially be mass produced for profit. However, the Northern Interest Trading Company group appears to Dusk to have all been killed and consumed by a giant beast called the Deepwalker, which live in the Pantheon waters but have been known to attack those on land. However, Dusk does spot the trail of a potential survivor and follows that trail to eventually find Vathi, who is working for the Northern Interest Trade Company, though as he discovers from her, those who were attacked and killed were only a small part of a much larger operation which has set up base on the other side of the island. Throughout the story, we also learn of another group referred to as the Ones Above. The Ones Above are an unknown faction of world hoppers that have recently traveled to the First of the Sun to learn and get access to whatever is giving the Aviar their powers. However, due to either laws or codes that the Ones Above are bound to, they currently are unable to come to the island or even trade with the people here for Aviar, since humans on this planet are currently seen as too technologically underdeveloped, so taking or trading from them would be seen as taking an unfair advantage of them. So to get around this sooner than later, the ones above seem to be influencing and speeding up the technological advancement of the humans on the first of the sun, though in a way that is very subtle and could even be seen as accidental, likely because the code or law they are bound to to uphold likely discourages this sort of behavior. And so technology on the first of the sun is really leaping forward at a remarkable pace, from previously only having access to basic and rudimentary tools to now having steam powered boats, and cannons, and even some basic firearms, in addition to a few machines that are supposedly left accidentally by the ones above which include a machine that can translate the written language, as well as a machine that can scan and print up-to-date locations on where the aviaries are on the island. The technology, though, is still not to the point where the ones above can get what they want from the people of the First of the Sun, though at the current pace of progress, it seems likely this will not take much longer. As we learn more about Dusk and Bathy, it becomes evident that, at least through most of this story, they each hold very different philosophies about the new age that seems to have been brought upon them by the ones above. Dusk, who feels a heavy duty to protect the culture he grew in, as well as the islands here in the Pantheons, is worried about the negative effects that rapid modernization could cause to everything he knows and loves. A worry rooted even from Dusk's own mother, whom we later find out did not name Dusk because of the time of day he was born but rather the time in history, as his mother felt that civilization as she knew it on the first of the sun was coming close to its end. Vathi has a very different perspective in that she feels that since progress is inevitable and impossible to hold back forever, then there is no reason to delay it. And since it is inevitable, one might as well try and further make use of new technology to reap its benefits, because even if one doesn't, others will. Now, as the Northern Interest Trading Company begin to figure out how these machines left by the ones above work, Dusk, who is still with Vathi in one of his few safe locations on Panji, gets a dire warning from Sack, his aviar, who can foresee his potential deaths, as Dusk suddenly begins to see visions of his dead body everywhere around him. So Dusk knows that they must be doing something that could lead to the destruction of everything, including himself, on the island. And so even though it is nighttime, which makes the already dangerous island exponentially even more deadly, Dusk and Vathi set out to try and reach the Northern Interest Trade Company and stop them from using the machine or whatever it is that they are doing that is causing Dusk to get these warnings. Now up to this point, Vathi is not aware that Dusk's second bird sack is also an aviar. One, because it is usually not possible for somebody to bond with a second aviar, but also because Sack is a species of bird from the Elekin Islands, not the Pantheon Islands where aviar birds come from. Because outside of Dusk and some other trappers, all who are very solitary and whom stay pretty much silent, no one else knows that regular birds can also become aviar by coming to the Patchy Island and gaining abilities like Sack has. Once this revelation is revealed to Vathi, Dusk really realizes that this is the tipping point and as word gets out, there is pretty much no chance for people to ever leave this island alone. 
Now, as far as traveling through Patchy at night, the trip ends up almost being impossible to undertake due to just how much more dangerous everything is. For example, accidentally touching a death ant may be tough during the day, but at night, you pretty much have to rely on blind luck. And since Dusk sees versions of his dead body all around him now, it is much harder to detect any nearby threats. Luckily, Dusk's aviator sack is intelligent enough to realize this and adjust the transparency of the bodies that he sees depending on how local the threat is, thus giving Dusk a chance, slim as it may be, to survive the trip. At one point, Vathi almost gets killed by a trap set by another trapper on the island. She spots some aviar wings and so walks towards them, thinking she might be able to discover a new location of aviars. Luckily for her, Dusk knows this is a trap and spots the danger and saves her at the last second, though injuring his arm to do so. And here he teaches Vathi one of the first and most important lessons for a trapper to learn, which is to, quote, never move before first asking yourself, is this too easy. On an island as dangerous and unforgiving as Pat G, anything that seems too easy is almost assuredly a trap. This lesson ends up being critical for Vathi towards the end of the story. Later, Dusk and Vathi encounter the most dangerous threat on the island, which is an extremely large bird predator known as the Night Maw. Vathi is able to kill one of the Night Maw with a portable cannon that can shoot a spear. However, more Night Maw pick up Dusk and Vathi's trail as they can hunt by scent in addition to cognitive ability. With no other options at his disposal, Dusk is forced to take Vathi to a secret and enclosed lake where they can get rid of their scent underwater. This lake, referred to as Patchy's Eye, is in the center of the island and is also more than likely the location of the perpendicularity on the first of the sun. Patchy's Eye and the enclosed area around it hold the secret of the aviar, which Vathi realizes when she sees hundreds of young aviar all around the lake. Dust confesses that this is where Avier come as chicks in order to gain powers that they are known for, and this is where Sack, who is otherwise a regular bird, gained her unique ability. However, it is not the lake itself that gives the Avier these abilities directly, but the trees called Patchy's Fingers that grow around it. What makes Patchy's Fingers special is that they produce a fruit that contain worms, and these worms infect the birds when the birds eat the fruit. And it is actually these worms who then reside within the aviar that give them their powers. Eventually, Dusk and Vathi do end up escaping the Night Maw and finally make it to the fortress set up by the Northern Interest Trading Company. Now, Dusk, being somebody who rarely talks or interacts with other people, struggles to verbally express to the Northern Interest Trading Company his thoughts regarding how dangerous the use is of this technology given by the ones above. Luckily, Vathi had learned some lessons from Dusk along the way, including his primary lesson that you should never move before first asking yourself, is this too easy? And she realizes that the technology that they are developing from the ones above are definitely too easy, and it is a signal that this is a trap. The ones above are just helping them so they can eventually justify taking everything away from them. Just how the aviars use the worms for their abilities, and the humans use the aviars for their abilities, the ones from above want to use the humans. And so the story leaves off with both Dusk and Vathi walking into the fortress to figure out what they can do to prevent the ones above from getting all they want. This preparation to fend off the ones above is likely going to be one of the central plot points with the new Isles of Emberdark, which also features Dusk as one of the main characters. And as Brandon Sanderson has said, this whole Six of the Dust story will take place broken up in the Isles of Emberdark as flashbacks with minor changes, as the events here will be very critical to understanding the more expanded story. We'll be covering what we know and what has been released so far for the Isles of Emperor Dark soon, so make sure to subscribe if you want to catch that and other Cosmere-related lore videos.